Hi, hi friends and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about Dirichlet and Newman boundary conditions. Please don't be frightened. Uh, and I want to point out, I pronounce it Dirichlet, but it's Dirichlet. So, and this is Neumann, not Newman. Neumann, Neumann, Neumann. So, let's examine what are their differences. In case you think of Dirichlet boundary conditions, well, you simply tell that at the end points your functions equal to zero. And this is it. But in case you wanna kind of, it's just a tiny piece of your function. You wrote it down not to repeat many times. When it bounces off, kind of there is a boundary, what is the function gonna be? Well, it's gonna be this. Look. It's gonna be how it reflects. Kind of, it's an inverse. Look, if there was a plus, here is gonna be minus. And kind of, you see? You start with what you ended with, and kind of, you reflect it to the minus part. Kind of, you change the sign. And it will look pretty much like this as a whole picture. Kind of you have a plus, minus, plus. Then your function bounces off and you have minus, plus, minus. What for we do this? Well, for one point mainly, because of uh, the boundary, our value equals to zero, zero. Please note it. We kind of have to cancel the signs and plus, plus minus always equals to zero. This is it. This was a Dirichlet boundary condition. What about the Neumann boundary condition? It can be zero, two, but in most cases it's not. It doesn't equal to zero. Uh, it's rather I either kind of other different value and you see those are flat kind of at the ends this is a specific point of Neumann boundary conditions they are flat at the endings what you do when they reflect because of they are non-zero non-zero when you reflect them you don't have to think of inverse function you do not need to put plus into minus. No. You rather simply reflect. What was your ending is going to be your start. See, you started with plus. You begin with the same. Uh, you ended with a plus. You start with the same plus. After it follows minus and then plus. It's kind of a bounce off picture. Well, as I said, left to right, right to left. Thanks for watching. Hope you did comprehend the Dirichlet and Neumann boundary conditions. Uh, the whole point of them actually is concealed in string theory. They are widely used here. What for, you would ask? Well, the reasoning is in the strings themselves. And in string theory, particularly, we use the Neumann boundary conditions to make strings more real and to don't have infinities on their endings. So thanks for watching. Bye.